can't seem to get your water chemistry to balance, are your pH and alkalinity levels impossible to get right? High pH can irritate your eyes and skin and stop your chlorine from working, and low pH can corrode your pool equipment, wear down your liner, and erode metal and concrete. And if your alkalinity is off, well, that can mess with your pH. It can all feel like an endless cycle or a domino effect where you balance one level only to throw off the other one. Hi, I'm Matt from Swim University, and I know that water chemistry can be frustrating. The key to getting your levels to balance is knowing what chemicals to add and in what order, and understanding what causes them to fluctuate in the first place. First, what exactly are pH and alkalinity, and how do they work in your pool? Well, pH measures how acidic or how basic your pool water is. Your pH should be between 7.4 and 7.6. The right pH helps your chlorine to work effectively, and chlorine that works well keeps your water sanitary and safe to use. Now, if your pH is too high, it can cause cloudy water, scale buildup, itchy skin, and equipment damage. And if your pH is too low, it can corrode your equipment and cause skin and eye irritation. Now, total alkalinity, which is also just called alkalinity, measures your pool water's ability to neutralize these acids. Your alkalinity acts as a buffer to keep your pH steady. Now, when your alkalinity is too low, there's nothing to protect your pH, and your pH is gonna fluctuate wildly. And if the alkalinity is too high, it can push your pH out of range. So your total alkalinity should be between 80 and 120 parts per million. So your pH helps your chlorine to work better and your alkalinity helps your pH to stay stable. Now, because all of these levels affect each other, you wanna always adjust your total alkalinity first, then your pH, and then your chlorine. Now, unfortunately, these levels can fluctuate a lot from week to week. Everything that enters your pool impacts your chemistry. That includes rain, dirt, debris, and yes, even swimmers themselves. Because pH is especially so volatile, it's important to test your water at least once a week and add chemicals before bad pH levels harm your pool or the people swimming in it. Just an aside, if you're feeling overwhelmed and you want all of this information in one easy to use place, check out the Pool Care Handbook. It's a handheld reference that covers everything that you need to know about water chemistry without all of the overwhelm. Inside, there are helpful dosing charts and troubleshooting guides to help you master water chemistry and keep your pool water clean and clear. You can get a copy at swimu.com book or by using any of the links below. Okay, here are the chemicals that you need to balance your pH and alkalinity. Number one, alkalinity increaser or baking soda. Now to raise your total alkalinity, you can use alkalinity increaser at the pool store or baking soda. Both products are made of the same active ingredient, which is sodium bicarbonate. You can use the same amounts of either product in your pool. Adding this will also slightly raise your pH, though not as much as total alkalinity. Number two is pH increaser or soda ash. Now to raise your pH, you add pH increaser. You can also use soda ash, sometimes referred to as washing soda. Both pH increaser and soda ash contain the same active ingredient, which is sodium carbonate. Now adding this to your water will also slightly raise your total alkalinity, though not as much as your pH. Aerating your water can also raise your pH without adding any chemicals. You can do this by running water features like a waterfall, a slide, or a dedicated pool aerator. This will raise your pH without affecting your total alkalinity. Number three is pH decreaser or muriatic acid. Now pH decreaser will lower both your pH and your total alkalinity. There's actually no such thing as alkalinity decreaser. You can also use muriatic acid, but it's much more hazardous compared to just the pH decreaser. And if you want help with the exact dosages, you can check out our other videos on pH or the dosing charts in the pool care handbook. Total alkalinity and pH go hand in hand, so adjusting one can affect the other. That's why it's important to add chemicals one at a time and then retest the water after each dose. Add each chemical one at a time directly to the water with the pump and filter running. Wait at least 20 minutes to let it circulate and dissolve before retesting the water. But even if you add your chemicals correctly, it's still hard to balance these two levels. You may find yourself balancing your alkalinity perfectly only to mess with your pH. So here's how to get these levels right based on different combinations of low and high alkalinity. First, let's start with low pH. If you have low pH and low alkalinity, you wanna add alkalinity increaser first, and then you can add pH increaser or just aerate the water if your pH is still low. If you have low pH and normal alkalinity, you wanna add pH increaser 
or aerate the water to raise the pH. If you have low pH and high alkalinity, add pH decreaser to lower your alkalinity and then add pH increaser or aerate the water to raise your pH. Now here's how to fix alkalinity if you have normal pH. Let's say you have normal pH and low alkalinity. Well then you can add alkalinity increaser to just raise your alkalinity. If you have normal pH and high alkalinity, add pH decreaser to bring down the alkalinity and then you can aerate your water to raise the pH if it's dropped too low. And here's how to fix high pH. If you have high pH and low alkalinity, you can add pH decreaser to lower your pH and then you can add alkalinity increaser. Now, if you have high pH and normal alkalinity, add pH decreaser to lower your pH and then you can add alkalinity increaser if the alkalinity dropped too low. If you have high pH and high alkalinity, you can add pH decreaser to lower both levels. Finally, what if you have chronically high or chronically low pH? What if this problem keeps coming back? Well, here are some common underlying issues. Number one, you have water features. Aeration will raise your pH. So whenever your water features run, they cause CO2 to escape, which will bump up your pH. Number two, you have a salt system. Salt water generators naturally raise pH in the water as they run. You can run your salt system less often, but you wanna watch your chlorine levels. Three, you just use calcium hypochlorite or calhyposhock or liquid chlorine. Both of these types of chlorine will raise your pH. Liquid chlorine, much more than calcium hypochlorite or calhypo. Number four, you use chlorine tablets. These are acidic and can bring down your pH level. Number five, your alkalinity is off. Remember that total alkalinity can affect your pH, so you wanna make sure that your alkalinity is in range. Number six, more people have been swimming. When there are a lot of bathers in the water, it'll cause your pH to change. So when it comes to water chemistry, what else do you need help with? Do you still find pH and alkalinity confusing? Let me know in the comments and I'll make more videos to help. And if you want more help with ongoing maintenance and easy weekly care, check out the pool care handbook at swimu.com book or using the links below. Thanks for watching and happy swimming.